Hello everybody, welcome to this Excel 365 video on the recursive lambda function. This is a lambda function that can feed back upon itself and iterate through a solution like an algorithm. I'm going to have the timestamps along the bottom for you to go wherever you want in the video, but to begin I'm going to go over a very basic recursive lambda function that's going to make it, I feel, painfully obvious how it works and really what's happening with the recursive lambda. Then I'm going to show you two advanced examples of recursive lambdas that I made and I'll copy them in the comments section so you can paste them in at home and follow along with that. So let's get started with the basic example. One of the first rules of a recursive lambda is that it has to have a way of ending the recursion and giving an output. And you can see that's handled here with this if statement. So if x equals 10, then this recursive lambda is done and it will output the value loops and whatever the variable of c is. And if, it, if x is not equal to 10, here is where the lambda will call back upon itself. So this lambda named is rec lambda. It's calling rec lambda again and it's passing in these two variables as part of an algorithm. So whatever x was, we're going to increase it by one and whatever C is we're going to increase it by one. So if the user put 0 0 or 0 and then blank the first time that this runs x will be 0. x does not equal 10 so it'll jump to here. x will become 1 and c will become 1 and it'll pass them back into this lambda and now x is 1 c is 1 x does not equal 10 so x becomes 2 2 passes it back and so on until eventually x is 10 x will equal 10 it'll do loops colon and the value of c which if we start x on 0 c would be 10 and we can see that in action here let's look at this so you see REC lambda as zero, and that means the X is a zero and the C is a zero. So it took 10 loops. If I change that to five, then C should only be five because it only looped through five times. I named the first of the two functions that we're gonna go over binary count. It'll tell you how many steps it had to take in the binary search. For example, I'll make this 1 million, and I have a random number generator here. So it found out of 1 million in only 19 iterations. And I can hit F9 to randomize that. And you'll notice that it will never go above 20. Because if you take 1 million and you cut it in half 20 times, you get down to only one value remaining. And if you made this 10 million, it's only going to increase the maximum to 24 searches required. Then the second advanced recursive lambda function that you have available in the comments section will list out those steps that it took. So to find the number 371,254 out of a list of 1 million, the computer would take 19 steps, and these would be the steps that it would take. All right, let's go over this example lambda we have here. So this lambda is named binary count, and the variables I had to use shorter variable names so it wouldn't run off the screen here. But basically, we have the answer. That's the correct lookup value that we're trying to guess at. A to Z is the lowest to the top of the list, G is the current guess, and C is the count. So the first time we come through, we don't intend G or C to be input by the user. We're going to use them as variables internally, but we'll need to set the guess the first time that we run, and the, after that point, it's going to feed back the guess based on the result of the algorithm. So this first time it goes through, if G equals zero, then it's going to do the top of the list subtracted from the bottom of the list divided by two rounded to zero decimals. And that is going to be the first guess. So for example, if we had one to 20 and the actual value we're looking for is two, the first guess would be 10. Then we move on to the logical test to see if the lambda function can be concluded or not. Lookup value is less than the guess. If that's true, then we're going to call this binary count function again, but we're going to replace these five variables with five new variables. And then we're going to feed that back in and it's just going to loop. So the first variable we leave the same because that's the lookup value that that's not going to change. That's what we're trying to get to. The floor of this list isn't going to change because the guess value is actually higher than the lookup value. But the ceiling will change. So we're going to replace the ceiling with one less than the guess. And I'll go back down to my example here. If we had guessed 10 and the answer is 2, then we're going to go then from 9 to 1 because we know it's not 10, because if it was 10, this whole line of code wouldn't, wouldn't have executed. Then we go to the second part of the logical test, is the answer greater than the guess? And we do just the opposite, so x stays the same, we increase the floor by one, the ceiling stays the same, and then determine the next guess by the ceiling minus the new floor, divided by two, rounded to zero, 
plus the new floor. So this would normally be plus the lowest value and the lowest value is now guess plus one. And then our count we're gonna pass through is gonna be the count plus one more than it was previously. And here's the last part of the logical check. If the other two were not true, then this one will be true, which will be the end of this algorithm. And the output will be C plus one. So if you wanna try these at home, just grab the Lambda function out of the comments section, copy it to the clipboard, go to formulas, name manager. You're gonna to go to new and you're gonna type in the value here, either binary count or binary sequence to match the way that it's spelled out in the lambda function and then you're gonna paste the lambda function down here so in this lambda function you can look and see here when it's recurring on itself what is it calling it and you need to name this the same thing binary count or binary sequence so I already have these saved so I'm gonna hit cancel Okay, so I've got the other function up here, binary sequence now, and this one's almost exactly the same, except for instead of counting the number of times that it's looping through, it's taking a C value and it's assigning comma and the guess value as a string. So it's gonna be a string of all the values that it tried to get to where it is. And then it's chopping up that string with text split and making it into a range of cells. And then it's just cleaning it up a little bit and transposing it to be a vertical list. And the output you see here is like this. Let's see that one in action a little bit more. We'll go from the numbers one to 10 million. And you can see if the lookup value was two, these are the steps that we need to get to that. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Please send me a like if you liked it and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.